I will introduce our commencement speaker. Anastasia Palacios is an author, television host, transformational speaker, and media coach. Anastasia has over 70,000 hours of public speaking experience and has filmed over 750 episodes of live TV in the past five years. As a master storyteller, she has coached over 340 international business leaders in 43 countries on camera confidence, public speaking, and style. As the owner of the Social Light Media, Anastasia brings the same creativity and focus that allowed her to build her personal influencer brand to individuals, businesses, and organizations. She has provided her communication ex expertise in national campaigns for women and youth rights. As the Youth Ambassador of the Bahamas to the Commonwealth in 2007 to 2009, the College of the Bahamas Student Union President 2008 to 2009, and University of Miami Student Government Chief of Staff External from 2010 to 2011, Anastasia has traveled to over 15 countries around the world to advocate for and create legislative legislation regarding youth rights. She has served on several government boards over the years. Anastasia is listed on Freeport City Council's Wall of Fame and has won and been nominated for numerous awards. She is married to entrepreneur, environmentalist, and businessman Carlos Palacios. They have two children. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Anastasia Palacios. Mr. President, Board of Trustees, lecturers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and University of the Bahamas North graduates. Good morning. I had to make my way from that side of the stage to this side of the stage because I wanted to see you. You know, I don't know if your biography is supposed to make you nervous, Mr. Bethel, who's my uh, old principal in the back. But when they said 70,000 hours of public speaking, I say, boy, it sure hasn't served me for such a time as this. Because I come up here and I am nervous. You know, it, it seems to be a thing with commencement speakers uh, when you research it, right? And as any good graduate knows, you have to research before you step up to the plate. I see some graduates nodding. When you research it, you find that many people talk about the fear that they have associated with giving an address like this one. When Oprah Winfrey was speaking at Harvard, she was so nervous that she turned the entire organization, her company, OWN, on around just to be ready to share. When J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, got the opportunity to share at Harvard, she was so nervous that she lost weight. Y'all, my business is still the same and my dress is still too tight, so none of these things have happened for me. And yet, the countless hours, the sleepless nights, the anxiety, the worry. Y'all thought I was talking about y'all, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about me. It's, I'm nervous, I'm the nervous. No, I'm teasing. It, all of it culminates in this moment because I get to share in this experience with you. I will admit that I was so nervous about this speech that I reached out for help. One of the very best things you could do when you don't know something. And I went to my coach and mentor and said, I am speaking to a class of warriors. They call themselves the Mingos, but these men and women are so phenomenal. They have overcome so much. They are so great in what they have already achieved and what they're about to go. That I need help. And she said to me, Star, you have spoken on my stage multiple times to thousands of people. I'm not going to give you any idea on what to say. Well, that's a good mentor, eh? Thank you so much. <laughs> but I want you to remember this. You have nothing to hide, nothing to protect, and nothing to defend. You are nervous because you are making this speech about you. When you make it about the people that you serve, 
when you remember the reason to which you have been called, the thoughts will come. And they came. It wasn't until 3 o'clock this morning, so if I fall asleep while I'm giving you all your diploma, please forgive me. But they did come because I was reminded of what I say to every one of my students when I coach them on speaking. That what we share, the stories that we give, they ought to do three things. Answer the question, what do we want our audience to feel, to think, and then to do? Mingos, as you go into this world, you go equipped with your degrees today. You go in with the idea that every room you enter, you must have an impact that allows people to feel, to think, and to do something just a little different. With that in mind, I want to give you three things that I think are critical for us to continue to move from surviving to thriving. The very first thing that I want to share with you is the power of authenticity and service. I want this side of the room to say authenticity. It's a big word, but y'all got it. Authenticity. They little dry, so I can come back to y'all so y'all can help them out. I can let them say service first, okay? And I want y'all to say service. service. That side is better, so y'all just gotta help with authenticity, okay? Authenticity. authenticity. And? Service. Authenticity and service. I was sitting on a stage just like this one, and it would have been now 12 years ago. I was the student union president at the time, and it was a graduation much like this one in New Providence. And I was sitting next to a board member, much like I am today. And I remember sitting there and feeling inadequate. I don't know if any of you have ever felt like you've been put into a position where maybe you just should not be there, where you think the people around you have a little more to offer than you do. You see, the lady sitting next to me was a brilliant, just like a repeat thing, she's brilliant. This lady was a lawyer, she's a lawyer. It must be a thing about me and UB graduations, but I was sitting in the presence of greatness, much like today, and I remember feeling inferior. Yet a lesson came back to me that my mother has always taught. Manners and respect will take you around the world. A simple good morning to this lady led to a conversation that would go on to change my life. She said to me, you're going to be done with the university, it was the college of the time, in just a few months. What's the plan? What's the next step? And I said to her, I do not know. I would love to continue my education. At the time, the College of the Bahamas only offered an associate in mass communications, which was my degree, but I wanted to go on to do more, to learn more. And I said to her, I would love to continue my education, but quite frankly, I do not have the finances to do so. Now, this was a woman who had watched me on the college board for the past year, who knew that I had committed my life to serving the students of the University of the Bahamas as the student body president. This was a woman who knew that I had committed many months of my time to traveling abroad to serve the community of Bahamians and young people across the Commonwealth through service. And she turned to me and said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll find a way to pay for you to go. And just like that, I had a $200,000 miracle in my pocket. God used that opportunity for truth telling, for authenticity, for honesty and good manners to show me, as I hope that he will show you through this story, that anything is possible. That he can open any door at any time if you would be committed to your truth and to the pursuit of excellence in service. You see, this is really not the first time that I was supposed to give a university speech. In actuality, I was selected as one of the top 10 finalists in 2011 at the University of Miami to speak on behalf of the students. I never made it to the final round. The challenge was that in order to qualify for this round, I was supposed to present my story in about two minutes and then share it on YouTube. I spent the entire time that I should have been preparing looking at somebody else's speech, seeing all the other speeches that people gave and then trying to copy them and turn it into my own. I never made it because I spent too much time watching someone else. 
give me a second audience. Let me just talk to the graduates right there. This is what people would say, sell your TV, buy your phone, and don't watch nothing. And it is so important that we focus on ourselves, that we recognize the power within us, the miracles that could come when we share our truth. I lost the opportunity to share with my graduation class that day because I was too busy trying to be someone else. Graduates, if you take nothing else from this speech, please take this notion that you've got to be yourself. God made you for such a time as this. And God made you and looked at you and said, this is good. You have to see yourself the way that God sees you. Sometimes in the battle to survive, as many of you have had to do, not just with Dorian and not just with the pandemic, but long before that in the personal lives that have led you to this moment, you've spent so much time surviving that the concept of thriving is foreign. So today, allow me just a few minutes to speak life into you to tell you who you are and who I see you as. This powerful group of women and the few men here who I know that God has put here as an example to other men that they can do this too. Class of 2002, you are the class where some of you have started, stopped, started again, and yet you are still here. You are living proof that we may be delayed, but not denied. You are the class where people push through floodwaters, some carrying babies on their necks so they could live to see another day. You are living proof that man can conquer any challenge and survive. Ladies and gentlemen, in this class right here, people have lost their homes and their jobs, yet they found a way to get through school. You are living proof that when we want a thing bad enough, nothing can stop us from getting it. You are the class where many of you are the first in your families to go to college. You are living proof that education can and will change your family's legacy. You are the class where some of you had no idea where the next dollar was coming from. Amen? And yet, here you sit. You are living proof that God will make a way out of no way once you put action with faith. Class of 2002, you are resilient and strong. You are brave and bold. You ought to be celebrated for every fight you've won. But today, even as we celebrate that, I want to tell you that you also get to be soft and vulnerable, that you get to claim victory and abundance without strife and struggle that you get to choose from this point on, not just to manage to survive, but to thrive. Whenever life causes you to doubt yourself, remember the adjectives I use today to describe who you are. You already have everything in you. The proof that y'all are here, pandemic, Dorian, no classrooms, online learning, from BMES to the next place, you are proof. Y'all hear me? When you face it, when you face whatever's against, against you moving forward, remember that you have already done it and that if you could do it then, you will do it again in the future. Authenticity and service will open up doors for you that you cannot imagine. But even as those doors open, you will face attacks. You would think that you guys have already been through much God would say, all right, just give them a blight. They can keep going. This has been a lot, right? I wish life works like that, but it doesn't. I remember sitting in my own graduation at the University of Miami and being elated. And yet the next day, I had to fly back to Grand Bahama to bury my best friend. She was 21. She was at a university function when she passed away. Six months after burying her, I buried my father. He had just been with me at my graduation, celebrating and healthy, 
and then I was back in Grand Bahama again for his memorial service. We will face many defeats, but we must never be defeated. What we can do in the face of any adversity and every attack that will come to you is to stand up and determine how we wish to treat those that are still left to be treated well. If you leave with nothing else, I want you to leave knowing that so much of the power of what God can do through you and for you will come in the form of how you treat people. Every door that has been opened for me has been opened, yes, through authenticity and service, but also because a person literally held the door open and said to walk in. But if I was mean and disgusting and miserable, if I was always gossiping and cranky and rude, who opened any door for me? When I was the COBUS president, I had the opportunity to work with a young woman that was elected on a ticket separate from mine. She ran as vice president with someone that was not elected president, and rather than wanting to work together, she spent the entire first three months fighting my election. That meant that my team and I came into office four months later than we should have, and we continued to struggle together to try to have cohesiveness as a team. She went so far as to lie about me having a relationship with someone on the senior staff, she went so far as to try to have me impeached based on a technicality. And in the end, she was the one that my senators fired on that same technicality. When you dig a grave for someone, prepare to climb in it yourself. Now, I don't say this story to boast, because even now I take no joy in someone else's pain. But I say this to remind you that you have to treat people the way you want to be treated. There is no gossip, there is no abundance in gossip. There is no joy that could come from setting traps for someone else. You will find people as you move on from this place in your workspaces, in your community organizations, even in your churches that are bent on destruction. You have to know yourself, and that's why I started with authenticity, so you can know how to stand and how to stand in who you are. It is the goodness of man that makes a way. You see, this is a class of parents, and I see beautiful young babies in the audience today. I know that some of them are hair chairing. Yes, mommy. Some of them are hair chairing. Their mother's on. Their father's on. I said to you that my father died, and he did. But can you believe that even in his absence, God has provided for every need for my family and I? I know, and my mother is sitting here today, I know that the goodness and the mercy and the miracles I've seen in my life come because I have been planted in good soil. That these kind people who themselves never necessarily got to live their dreams or look for their best life or create something new, who just worked hard diligently to sacrifice for their children because they were kind, because they were committed, because they were excellent in showing up at their jobs, their children reap the reward. As you go out into this community, I beg of you to think about how you treat people. Because it's not just you that you are working for. It is the seed that comes behind you. And whether you receive the blessing or not, and I truly believe that God will pour out his abundant blessings on this group, whether you receive the blessing or not, it is the children coming behind you that that seed is for. The final thing I want to talk to you about is the importance of vision and community. I've talked to you about service. I've talked to you about how the miracles of authenticity and service have given me more than I could ask, think, conceive, or imagine. And as we look at this word commencement, I want you to remember that commence means to begin. And so while a lot of y'all thought y'all was finished today, this is just the start. My friend looking at us, she's like, no, I, I ain't feeling that. Yes, sis! This is just the beginning of something great. When I graduated from the University of Miami, my degrees were in international studies and political science. I thought I was going to work for the United Nations. I ain't reached that yet. <laughs> you see, life will be a querying road that goes up and down, around and back again. You may end up exactly where you thought you would, or God may take you in a totally different direction. 
and yet give it the power to be more than you could imagine. I've worked on some of the largest campaigns in our country, including the Vote Yes and Bahamas Jump Canoe Carnival. I continue to host Bahamas at Sunrise, our nation's longest running TV program, and God has blessed me with marriage and children. I spent the last three years coaching dynamic business leaders around the world on public speaking techniques, and I've coached next to internationally known thought leaders and best-selling authors across the world stage. Together with friends and partners, my husband and I have built four businesses, hired over 100 Bahamians, and continue to seek new ways to ensure that our country is ready to meet the challenges of climate change through our company's brand development, Eden Farms and Blue Terra. All of that happened, but I studied international st uh, uh, relations and political science. Be open to the move of God in your life and be ready to utilize the skills you've learned in doing these degrees to pursue whatever it is that God has planned for you. I could not have imagined the multitude of blessings that would be mine when I was sitting in the back of our old Toyota Crown waiting for my mom to come out of assistant professor week's class uh, at, at the COB on Peachtree Street. And I couldn't have imagined it sitting at the University of Miami when I graduated in 2011. And I cannot imagine where you will be 11 years from now. But that is the beauty of an amazing God who promised that we can do more than we can ask, think, conceive, or imagine according to the power that works within us. The power that works within us. That means we can't wait on God. God is waiting on you. And he's waiting on you to merge with like-minded people. The very best of you will emerge as you surround yourself with people who honor and celebrate your light. My life has been transformed by the husband I share my intimate energy with and the mentors who give great advice and open doorways into new places and new ways of thinking. You may not want to hear this now, but to continue education, to continue your education will be essential to the heights that God has for you. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to come back to UB but it does mean that you have to see it worthwhile to invest in seminars, workshops, conferences, and community organizations that allow you to grow your most important asset, your mind. Join Toastmasters, join Rotary, join the Red Cross, Kiwanis, or Pilots, but be a part of something that is more than you and commit yourself fully to it. Then watch where it takes you. It was Toastmasters that opened the door for Bahamas at Sunrise. Bahamas at Sunrise had opened the door for me to meet my coach, Lisa Nichols, and that meeting and that chance meeting of working with Lisa Nichols has led to my current career path, and then watching all the knowledge that I gained from her then allowed my husband and I to expand our businesses together. But it started with an organization. It started with service, and it continues to go that way. You see, this is important because Grand Bahama at large and the Bahamas in total is on the precipice of a revolution and you are poised to lead it. Revolutions don't have to be led with guns and violence. They can be led with creativity and emotional intelligence and the brilliance of this graduating class. In 1931, a boy was born in Smith's Point whose family was so poor that he wouldn't eat for days at a time. Today, because of his investments and his creativity, thousands of grand bohemians eat each week and hundreds fly in to try the best KFC in the world. Yeah. You all know what I'm talking about. Haywood Cooper Sr. used his hunger as a force to transform his family legacy. From a butler to a food store owner to a franchise owner, the lives of the people of Grand Bahama are forever changed because he married faith and action. He married authenticity and service. He married determination with the will of God to go along an uncharted path. He gave the credit of his success to God and his wife, reminding us through his life story of the importance of partnership. It is so fitting that all of Dr. Strawn's work will lead to you be, be, being a part of the complex he built and become the hub of a future for a generation of grand Bahamians that are no longer concerned about the magic, but are being the miracle themselves. Dr. Cooper was my man. There are stories of hundreds of grand Bahamians who have done so much and so much more. But Dr. Cooper is a reminder that he could overcome barely surviving as a child in Smith's Point to thriving in a castle at the end of his life. 
He did it through recognizing his value and the value that he had in God. He did it in service while building a business that his family could carry on. He did it through partnership and mentorship. You'll be he is an example, but you will be the example for the future. You all understand that this is a new time, that we don't need the free port of old. We need the free port of new. And you get to be the ones to make it happen. So celebrate today. Take these degrees and all you've worked, some of you working 10 years for this moment. Y'all make some noise for that man, that's a big deal. And remember that this is just the beginning. It is not so much the degree, but the skill sets learned in the degree. It is the authenticity, it is the finding you. It is the continuous work on your mind. It is the right friendships, the right partnerships. That is what will transform Grand Bahama. In this era of NFTs and storytelling where for the first time artists can truly be paid their value, in this era where we are transforming our financial landscape to focus on digital currencies, in this era where you get to create and host and be the tourism ambassadors yourselves by simply curating the right profile online. Do not take this degree for granted. Use it as the stepping stone to not just rebuild Grand Bahama, but transform Grand Bahama. That power is in you. And I know that power is in you because you have survived. Nothing is impossible with God. Many of you watched the waters rise 10 and 20 feet. How much more will God allow you to be lifted up 10 and 20 feet beyond where you thought you could be? Many of you watched people get through this pandemic. Some of them didn't make it, and those that did, it seemed as if they wouldn't, but they pushed through. How much more will our God, who shut down a world for sickness, shut down anything that tries to hold you back? There is nothing that you cannot do. Because you be class of 2002, you have survived, and now you thrive. I cannot wait to see you continue to succeed against the odds. Thank you.